Falco, what's up, and welcome back to the channel for yet another FC Finch review. And yes, it is Eagle Moss Day. Yes, I know that I have actually been away for a week, and uh, it did feel good to just take a little bit of a break, but we are back in action, hot and heavy with the action. So I'm going to try to do two Eagle Moss reviews this week to make up for everything. Same thing, there's probably going to be two Transformers reviews. I'm looking to finish uh, my Ocular Max combiner by tomorrow. So, uh, but either way, enough of the updates. Let's, let's get on with the Owen. Oh, we'll have an unboxing by the way okay now 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 we're done with the updates so uh real quick we are taking a look today at the eagle moss saber class this is issue number 56 in the uh, official starships collection so uh it's definitely an earlier uh model uh just like the steamer class but steam runner class excuse me uh but yet again you know no less uh interesting definitely a cool little model and of course we first see this ship um as part of the fleet at sector 001 in Star Trek First Contact, the movie, not the Next Generation episode. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. And, of course, that means taking a look at the magazine. I got the ship moved out of the way, and there we have a nice shot of the uh, Saber class up front. Nice, uh, again, this is another one of those ships that you really kind of got to look at it from an angular view to get the uh, full gist of it. And, uh, again, I I I've never been crazy about this class, but, man, um, this, this cover photo, I love how they have all the lights and everything. Just really looks like the ship is glowing, coming to life. Just really, really looks good. I uh, got the shuttle bays right here in front, which I, I think is a crazy cool idea. I kind of like that. So you could have like kind of a little uh, loading bay outside um, uh, right here, right in front of the bridge. So that definitely looks really, really cool. And of course, it is a light cruiser launched in the 24th century at a length of 222 meters at a warp 9.7 maximum speed. And there we go. And again, uh, we got a nice frontal orthographic view of the Sabre class. Uh, and again, it's just one of those ships that you really got to look at it from a uh, an isometric view to really appreciate because it just looks Told, it, you, you really can't tell the full gist of it um, unless you see uh, that and from that angle. Uh, it's another. It's a light cruiser launched in the 24th century, 223 meters, a crew of 40, so similar to the Defiant um, in uh, crew type. Obviously, clearly a warship. Uh, max speed warp 9.7, 10 phaser emitters, and torpedo launchers, unknown amount. There, of course, is our stand instructions. We'll go over that. And then, of course, we have Saber Class designing the ship, assembling the Borg Queen, and on screen and uh yeah and there we go into some nice uh, up close shots of uh the basar collector the uh underside of the ship and the top of the ship towards the stern area moving on we got yet another wow look at that view uss jaeger ncc 61947 and again just love the lights all over the you just you really get a sense that the ship is illuminating um uh, Saber class, compact and well armed. Saber class ships were involved in the twenty in twenty fourth century battles with the Borg and the Dominion in the twenty fourth century. And uh, again, we'll move right on, right there, and there we have a, um, and there we have a, a bunch of nice uh, views of the ship from all over again got some uh, nice warp effect here got the ship near the defiant clearly we see it in deep space nine at some point and of course our first appearance right here at the battle of sector zero zero one so there we go right there and then of course we have all oh, look at these orthographic views got nice up close shots got a nice upper orthographic view a frontal orthographic you got the main deflector disc the main bridge right up front there front and center in the ship and then of course we have the shipyards um, I believe it's on the uh, one of the Voyager episodes. And then, of course, we have our preliminary sketches in designing the Sabre class. There we kind of can see the uh, ship take shape. Now, again, uh, similar to the Akira and the Steamrunner, this ship was one of the five designed uh, for uh, first contact. So, um, and then we get to some uh, uh, some shots of the Borg Queen, um, some preliminary sketches. And, uh, wow, just uh, crazy to see how uh, she developed over these. You can see uh, kind of where really they got the ideas uh, for, like, you know, spider Spikiness, uh, like similar to, the, to what we see in the Narada. Um, definitely ooh, knocked a, knocked one of my lights over, my, my little lights. Um, uh, but definitely, you can just kind of see uh, the inspiration for some future Star Trek designs. And then, of course, we have another shot of the Borg Queen. You can see her becoming more. And then, of course, the Alice Cridge 
right there. And then of course we have a Sabre class firing a torpedo, an Akira class starship over here. Um, and uh, yeah, and that is it for the magazine. A nice up top orthograph view of the Sabre class. And of course, let's start with our stand instructions. And uh, hey, another stand that actually cooperated with me. So uh, of course, we all know how this works by now. Peg in the hole uh, right here and uh, just put that in. It stays in pretty firm. And then of course, uh, one of the easiest uh, methods of latching, you'll just latch onto the back of the uh, uh, main primary hull area right here. And uh, there you go. And she will sit nice and pretty in her hull. In her hull. Uh, kinda got, let me lower the camera so we can kinda see um, the pose we get out of her. And you can see she's kinda shooting off towards the stars. So uh, there you go. And let's get a good look at the Sabre class. Move the stand back. And uh, yeah, um, so first impressions, uh, the ship is really light. Um, again, this is definitely lighter. I'm not sure if there's any die cast in this at all. It seems like pretty much all an entire plastic shell, which uh, doesn't really bug me. Again, I mean, at the end of the day, this was a $30 model and uh, it is very detailed as we will see. Um, uh, so uh, again, I'm not really too bugged by that, but just, you know, if, if you're looking for a nice weighty feel there's really not one in the ship she is as small as uh the the uh her schematics say she is um but again uh similar to the steamer wow um just really nice detail and again this ship was never really a main ship i mean it was a background ship and uh you know again gotta love it leave it to eagle moss um to just really pull out with the detail i mean this ship is really detailed um transparent plastic on the bassard collectors for the uh nacelle areas looks really really good ncc 61947 right on the side of the uh nacelle area and then of course you have a nice uh detail a nice like eggshell blue and a deep blue for the deflector got surrounded with a nice uh orange and again the Aztecing detail again it's a nice you know uh lighter shade of gray and then you got a dark shade of gray and they get some really dark shades of gray and they're outlined in black looks really really good and again these kind of are protruding outwards uh so you can run your finger over them got a phaser strip right here all the escape pods and a beige tone got them right along the bottom side of the ship again a lot a lot of escape pods for a crew of 40 but uh, i guess whatever you get an escape pod and you get an escape pod um uh, can never be too safe, I guess. Phaser strips along the front here. And again, you know, it's got some nice rib detail right over here. Um, again, um, more escape pods. There's probably more than 40 escape pods on this ship. <laughs> um bridge kind of outlined uh they got a, a, a nice beige here and then of course uh no numbering on the uh on the uh garage on the uh shuttle bay garage doors but you can kind of see they got them protruding outwards uss jaeger ncc 61947 and again some nice uh conduit detailing right back here got the uh federation pennants just kind of coming out i love how they're kind of coming out like this three prong uh central thing at uss jaeger ncc 61947 United Federation Plants. Nice small text right there. Uh, more on the back. USS Jaeger. And I believe you got the nice red outlines. I believe these are for potentially the warp cores. Maybe. Um, and then you got some venting detail uh, right back here in what looks like. Yeah, these are your impulse engines. And uh, you got some nice venting detail up on top here. Feels really nice. Um, I also do, it's a subtle detail, but I kind of like this grill uh, coming out right over here. It looks good. And then, of course, more conduit detailing. Again, really nice, just nicely extruded shapes. Um, just kind of complement, add that uh, extra detail. So, again, while I'm not crazy about the uh, the design, uh, I, I don't think it looks it looks terrible, and it definitely, you know, I, I just kind of like how they had these, like, new designs, and again, uh, you know, I just want to show you, it's like, you know, look at this from the side, you look at it from the front, and uh, you look at it from the back, and y y you look at it from the top, and it's so hard to tell how the ships look. It's like it's no different from the steamer class, similar to the Hoover class that we have in Discovery, and uh, I, I just love it. You really got to get this ship in a, uh, uh, a an isometric uh, viewpoint to really, really see all the detailing and really get a good feel of the ship. Um, so that is that.
And we'll do a couple quick comparisons. So the first one we're gonna do is uh, right next to uh, one of her sisters, um, uh, the Steamrunner class. And uh, you know, uh, again, these ships uh, actually scale quite well. I think, what did we say? The Steamrunner was about, uh, you know, 300 or so meters just shy of that. And uh, yeah, you can definitely see, it definitely looks like about 100 meters of difference uh, in length between these two ships. So uh, again, really, at least from a length perspective, uh, these ships scale really good. So if you're trying to do that Wolf 359 thing for your collection, um, uh, you're, you're not really gonna be too uh, disappointed. Um, uh, and again, just seeing these ships from the side, you know, you, you gotta really get that 3D look um, to really appreciate them. And of course, next, Next up, we will bring in the big E herself. Um, and again, um, you know, talk about scaling. Um, uh, the Enterprise E is just shy of 600, is just about 650 uh, meters. I'm sorry, se almost 700 meters, excuse me. So uh, yeah, that actually looks pretty dang close um and again uh so it, it, it just goes by you know if, if you want to get the xle and all of the wolf 359 craft um uh then yeah you know you could definitely have a play date. i got a whole it's a bit difficult to hold on uh but you can definitely have a play date and uh really kind of display all these ships together and they will look right at home uh with one another um so yeah and there you go so let's summarize and there it is for the eagle moss official starships collection issue 56 the saber class uss jaeger and uh you know uh bravo hats off to eagle moss um this thing doesn't really have a lot of weight as i stated but it is very nicely detailed very nicely appointed and again it, that's that's what eagle moss excels at best with a lot of these ships we don't see this ship on screen and even when we do it's small it's a spec we never really get a clear shot of this ship just like the steam runner class and man they uh they, they just brought this thing to life uh for your shelf um and it is absolutely beautiful um again the transparent plastic mwah, the nice shades of grays um again just a really nice good detailed model and uh yeah i do definitely highly recommend it for your co collection especially if you're trying to build a battle of sector 001 fleet i mean the ships really scale quite well with one another um uh, the only thing this wouldn't scale well with is the uh smaller uh, is the uh, the basic akira class but luckily we have the xl for that and that is eh, i mean it, that, that's about the only uh uncommon denominator but it, it look yeah let's face it, the akira looks badass no matter what um but either way um so definitely do highly recommend this model um now i will put a link below to realmerch.com um you can check that out definitely give them a buzz they are very good at what they do not sure if they have this ship in stock but you can definitely check this out or check out the rest of their stock get yourself something nice uh i would not overpay for this ship i mean we all know eagle moss is uh the, the price of eagle moss is going up these days but uh i would definitely try not to overpay for this ship but again if you have to spend a few extra bucks uh, i will tell you it is worth it to have in your collection it's a very good looking ship and that being said that is going to conclude this review so if you did enjoy this review and you found it informative hit that like button also consider subscribing to the channel uh, i take breaks every once in a while because i do have another hobby during the summertime but uh uh definitely i will be trying to do a couple uh, another eagle moss review uh, i do at least one to two a week um so definitely stick around for those and uh you won't you won't be sorry that you did and thank you to those who already are subscribers to this channel and that being said it is time to end thank you so much for watching live long and prosper.